This program contains views and opinions that may not be suitable for all audiences. Audience discretion is advised. Welcome to Thespian Talk, everybody. I am your host, Gomer the Ranting Thespian, and this week we're actually starting a new format. Usually I have just one co-host with me, and that way we rotate through the, uh, every week. Um, but now... We're going to have uh, two co-hosts at a time. I'm going to give this a shot and rotate them out as we need. So this week we have Holly Christine and the cat. Hello. What's up? Yes. So <laughs> this is going to be interesting. Something to get used to, get new format going for a while. Hopefully this will work out a little bit better. Uh, especially since, uh, you know, Constructive Deconstruction, that's a full three-person show. And even the Poor Charlie podcast, we've, we're talking to somebody i've actually talked to somebody she's gonna come on the show and hopefully if it works out then that'll be another three-person show <laughs> so i was like yeah let's let's let's, let's bring Thespian and talk up to do the same thing um because three is a magic number i learned that on schoolhouse rock yes <laughs> <laughs> i mean hell even what even you know speaking of speaking of which even what the fuck is up to three people now i remember when i first started listening to what the fuck and it was just I think the time I started it was it was uh, Josh and Jillian. It was just the two of them, and then you and Charlie came on, and it was it's been magic ever since. So yeah, three is a magic number. <laughs> oh, so how have you two been this past however long? I I'm, I'm still laughing over the fact that three is a magic number, and I'm on a show called Nerd to the Third, and it has like six people. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you multiply. It doesn't have nine. <laughs> we will be, you know, give it, give us another year. We'll have nine people. Okay. <laughs> I mean, because then it would be acceptable. Three to the third. Yeah. There you go. Oh God. Ah. Uh, so. So yeah. So. Uh, if anybody who also listens to this also listen to constructive deconstruction, that show went up. And you know, I'm how an many... idiot. I just math wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Don't don't write in. Con- I realized it as soon as I said it. <laughs> oh no! <That> <laughs> Sorry, universe. <laughs> and it's Very it's gonna be agency. great because every time we try and talk about something else, we're just gonna come back to the number three. We're gonna right. be like, so in this week's news, but wait a minute, the number three. <laughs> I, I'm aware that Nerd to the Third would need to have 27 people. Yeah, <laughs> that just, I want you all to know. Yeah. Wow, that would, that would be a large ass podcast. They'd be like, "Holy shit, you're gonna do it! You're gonna do it!" It'd be like, like an a hour Japanese pop band. There you go. <laughs> oh, nerd Minuto. Nerd. Oh God. <laughs> and one of one of them's gonna bust out. You know, he's gonna grow up. He's gonna be on a soap opera, then have a good singing career. Ah, uh, that's that's always gonna be fun. Oh, but uh, speaking of. But as I, as I was saying, uh, the, the latest constructive deconstruction, the the Gamergate episode that that we did. Uh, guess how many comments we've got so far? Yeah, just Seven, guess. Seventeen. Or no. is it something something divisible by three? It is not divisible by three. I was gonna say twenty. Actually, no. A- actual comments that I've got, there are only five. Okay. Uh, most of them are basically just saying, "Oh, you didn't do your research." It's like, um, did you listen to the show? You know, for one thing, and th- there was one positive. And what what really makes me makes me uh, question YouTube is the the one positive, like, and I say positive, you know, in relation to the other p- comments, is that it was basically a guy saying, you know, yeah, I agree with most of your points, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Pointed out a couple of things that we had missed on that particular show, and he had a link to his own podcast, which I think is why YouTube was like, oh no, this might be spam. And it's like, really? Mm-hmm. Ugh. I mean, how are how are we supposed to see any rebuttals if you're gonna mark them all as spam for us, YouTube? I mean, come on. I mean, I know there are people that will spam, and you know, let let us decide what is spam and not you. Just like you know, YouTube should let the people decide what is actually infringing on copyright instead of using robots. <clears throat> ah, fucking bots. Oh, but but what I did see on YouTube. Uh, have either of you heard uh, have heard or seen the trailer for a game that's going to be coming out next year called Hatred? Yeah, uh, I've heard some buzz about it, but I haven't actually seen the trailer. Yeah, I haven't seen the trailer either, but I've heard plenty. <laughs> oh, then then I saved both of you the trouble because I saw the trailer. Oh my god! 
first of all, first of all, you know, it is as realistic as well it can be as far as looking realistic. You know, and for those who don't know, Hatred is a game where you are a guy who is just fed up with this world and he wants to die and take as many motherfuckers as he can with him whether they deserve it or not. Some of the things they've shown is just him going around shooting people, you know, slicing necks and, and you know, shooting people in the head execution style and shit. And I'm looking at this like, really? You, you're making a game based on something that you could do with fucking Gary's mod. I mean, if I want to go around and I want to just kill indiscriminately, I'll turn on Gary's mod, you know, you know, produce a bunch of zombies or whatever, and then just go run them over with a jeep. It's that's that's the thing, and it, it's it, it's not as oh, oh what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, uh, it's not as horrifying, because well, of course you know you're killing enemies that are actually out to kill you. Right, or if you just want to stay horrifying, just play some GTA and run around and beat people up on the street. Yeah, because at least GTA, yeah, as far as I know, there are still some elements that 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 makes it known that yeah, you try this in real life, it's not gonna it's not gonna work. Right. So. Well, and it's not, you know, I hate to say it, but it's not a you know a political based thing either. It's yeah. just. You're you're the bad guy, and you're supposed to understand that you're the bad guy. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the entire point. And maybe maybe that's one of the things that they do want to get across with hatred too. Is you are technically the bad guy. I don't know. At least I hope that's what they come across. That's how I understand it, and I'm pretty sure that's going to be how a lot of people understand it. So yeah, that that's going to be a thing. Watch this end up. Watch somebody get a hold of this. Look at this. And, you know, try and Jack Thompson everything with it. Uh, and, and and I'm not looking forward to that. Because we got rid of Jack Thompson and his ilk, you know, seven years ago. At least seven, six years ago. But, yeah. I may be talking out of my ass at that point. Uh, so, we, for our shout-outs this week, um, Kat, I think I'm on board with you because I don't have any. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't have any shout-outs. Oh, neither of you? Um, yeah. Well, thankfully, I have one. <laughs> hey! Saved! Yay. I mean, no, I, I don't. I, uh, uh -huh. um, no, <laughs> I totally do. One of um, us. One of us. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you will never defeat me. Um, <laughs> dang it, I'm prepared and not, I'm not afraid to admit it, even though I totally did math wrong earlier. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Not prepared to math, but you're prepared for other things. Right. Yes. Right. <laughs> um, so uh, the YouTube channel is, um, I believe it's the Yellow Jacket guy. Um, and I just posted this on my um, Twitter account, too. Um, it's a show is, that I've talked about before. Is it worth your cash? Um, and he talks about Mario Kart. Uh, Mario Kart 8. Um, and, and I'll talk a little bit about the show again. It's a very good concept, I think, for a review show because um, although he gives his opinion, he also talks about, like, you know, why he thinks it's worth it or not worth it and, you know, a better basis of, you know, what is this game actually probably worth. So. Yeah. And and I would ask, but you know, spoilers. People go check it out. That's the point of shoutouts. <laughs> right. Well, uh, he does say in the intro, and I, I will preface it with this: um, he hates Mario Kart. <laughs> so, oh wow. Yeah. Mm. How can you hate Mario Kart? Yeah. I guess I'd have to go watch this video to find out, but. Right. Yeah. Well, I, it has to do with being really into cars and racing games and Mario oh. Kart not really being a racing game. Not whoa, 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 whoa. Not really being a racing game? It's not. It's a battle game. It depends on what mode you play, but but I, I but then again, I've, I've, I I kind of like it. I've kind of gotten out of it. But at racing battle maybe might be a little bit more cuz you technically are racing, but you can also battle the fuck out of each other. Right. So maybe racing battle would be a little bit a little bit better, I think. What do you think? <laughs> eh, whatever. I'm I think, I think I'm not a gamer and I don't care. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm not a gamer, but even I like Mario Kart. Yeah, there you go. 
See? I like Mario Kart, but I'm not, like, super into cars and racing games, so... Yeah. You know. Oh. So... That, that's gonna be it for our shout-outs this week. Oh, God. Here we go with the news. Here we go. Here we go. Our first one comes, I believe, across the pond. Uh, yeah. In, uh, South Yorkshire. A mother was left horrified after her 10-year-old son returned from Tesco supermarket with a pumpkin carving kit, which included a sharp serrated blade. Pumpkin carving kit. Which, which for her, her reasons, probably would be a little bit more justified once we get in the article. Natalie Greaves from Sheffield and South Yorkshire described her reaction to Shay returning home with the one-pound kit. I went berserk when he came home with it. I couldn't believe he could pick up that sort of thing up as a child. There should have been an age restriction on it. Well, sharp blade, uh... The mum of three... Yeah, you can tell this is definitely from England. Yeah. Checked, checked online and found similar carving kits with restrictions allowing over... People on, bleh, allowing only people over 18 to buy it. I swear I can English good today. A Tesco spokesperson responded to this mother's anger. We follow a strict Think 25 policy. We were concerned by this incident and acted immediately to ensure all pumpkin carving knives will trigger an age restriction until prompt. No, age restriction till prompt. Yeah. Uh, my, my American sensibilities read till as until. Yeah. Because I'm American. Ah, uh, so... So okay, the, the making a news article out of out of all of this, a pumpkin carving kit. I never, I, I, maybe it's because I don't buy a lot of pumpkin carving kits. I don't do a lot with pumpkins, but I <laughs> never, I've never seen like an age restriction on them. I mean, I, it's I, because we live in America. And we've got freedoms. You can't take away our rights. Can't take away our rights. <laughs> can't take away our rights for our little kids to run around with a pumpkin. Pumpkin it would thing. not surprise me, actually, if if we had pumpkin carving kits with age restrictions on them and people tried to get rid of them because it, like, I don't know, infringed upon their right to bear arms. Yeah, <laughs> which, to me, it's a pumpkin carving knife. It, it, it It's good for carving pumpkins, but I don't see what, you know, I don't see many people going out... And, and just stabbing other people with it. I don't see kids going around and playing with it. You know, if if you don't want your kid playing with it, you 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 can take actions to keep your kids from playing with it. I mean, and... yeah. Well, I mean, they are serrated, but I mean, aside from having a pointy end to actually jab through the pumpkin, mm -hmm. they're not actually that sharp. Yeah. That just means you're not trying hard enough. <laughs> Wow, do I sound like some sort of sociopath psycho killer. <laughs> yeah, whoa, well, you have been on what the fuck for how long now? Well, it's not stabbing, you know, well, you just shouldn't stab harder. There you go. <laughs> so it, Guys, it's... don't stab harder, don't do it. <laughs> don't, don't do it. Don't kill people with pumpkin carving knives, kill people with yeah. real knives. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> oh, lordy. Kill people in your video games, not in real life. Yeah. There you go. That's why we have video games, so we can do this. And oh my god, <laughs> I I just think it's kind of silly that that with a pumpkin carving knife not being as dangerous as it, this article may make it seem, it's like you know the age restriction. Why it's not dangerous? It just takes a little bit of parenting, or maybe pumpkin carving knives they might be sharper over there in England than they are here. I mean, it's it it is possible. I think. Their, their pumpkins may have that stiff upper lip and, and they just have to hold on, so they're, maybe they're a little bit tougher. Maybe. Which, which if that's the case, then okay, sure, you know. But but still, it would, overall, at the end of the day, when it comes to like these whole pumpkin carving knives or whatever, you know, if you're a parent and you don't want your kid to be buying them or, or to be, you know, doing anything with them, then take a few steps, you know? If you're sending your kid to the store and you're worried that he's going to buy a blade or whatever, then go with him and make sure he doesn't, you know? I mean, there's still going to be that window of opportunity where that kid will go and, well, you know, you can't stop him then because you're not there. But when he gets back, you know, you could always say, hey, you know, you know, take it from him, put it somewhere and all that. Yeah, I'm rambling a little bit too much, which is what I tend to do. Uh, our next story, uh, where did this come out of? I think it is, oh, Florida. Take a shot. Oh, Florida. Yes. <sighs> Don't you hate it when you lock yourself out of your apartment when you're drunk? 
and naked and the police show up. Dude, I hate when that happens. <laughs> Me too! It's like, what the fuck? It's the worst. It's like, it's, it's like it happened to me. My roommate wouldn't come and wait, lift a goddamn finger. Turns out she wasn't home, which may have been a good thing. <laughs> no. That appears to be what happened to Carrie Starling, 27, in Fort Pierce, according to a recently released arrest affidavit. Fort Pierce believes that about 7.25 a.m. September 13th, went to Carlton Court and Seaway Drive for a disturbance in which a naked female was running around the area, yelling and screaming, and this had been going on for an hour, the affidavit states. Residents pointed to the address, saying a naked lady was nearby breaking things and yelling. Investigators encountered, encountered Starling in her birthday suit, apparently intoxicated. Her speech was slurred, and she said she had been drinking. And She said she locked herself out of her apartment, and police found smash pots where she had caused a disturbance. After finding that her apartment was locked, police took her to St. Lucie County Jail, where she was locked up on a disorderly intoxication charge. I hope they put her... I hope they dressed her first. Yes. Well, I think they have to. Well, yeah. But um, I, I think this has to have been more than alcohol. I do. Um, because seriously, running around yelling and screaming for an hour—that that'd be tiring. A, an hour is a long time to run and yell and scream. Yeah, especially when you're drunk. I mean, just. Uh... <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. There probably is more than just alcohol involved. Maybe, or maybe she had been drinking like the entire time, and alcohol, I don't know about anybody else, but it feels like it's hotter. I, I know it works differently, so you're not actually hotter, it just feels that way. And so, of course, what do you do when you feel hot? You disrobe! It makes perfect sense, especially in Florida. So, right, but but running and yelling and screaming for an hour, I just don't see that happening. No. Oh. No, not yeah, not running and screaming. Not at the same time. Not at the same time. You know, you might scream a little bit. You might go run and then take two seconds, catch your breath, <gasps> yell at somebody's face. Just, just why not? It's it's drunk and crazy, and I'm willing to bet this is going to end up on the next. What the fuck is wrong with you too? I also enjoyed that this happened at like seven thirty in the morning. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. That that might explain why it's news because if that were a Saturday night, that would just be Saturday night, right? Yeah. But seven thirty in the morning kind of makes a difference. Definitely, it's like we we live in the goddamn city. We didn't ask for a rooster. Oh wait, the day of the week was that's... that. No, it was it was a Saturday morning. So it was a Saturday morning. So her Saturday night or her Friday night her, was yeah. awesome. Must have been <laughs> holy shit, or maybe not because we don't know where her clothes are. <laughs> <laughs> what have I, that's what I want to know. What happened to your clothes, man? Did, I, oh, you know. <laughs> well, she was outside of her own apartment, apparently. So yeah, how one did, would assume that they were inside. Just how did she get outside? And for get to lock her. Like, like, what was she doing that she was like she was naked like, and outside my own apartment? Seems like a good idea. Maybe, a... maybe she like was really drunk at some strange hour and was like, "Dude, I forgot to get the mail." <laughs> <laughs> Uh, then, and then she gets out. Rest. Oh shit! No key. Doors locked. Oh shit! <laughs> she starts screaming for her dog to let her in or something. Oh god! <laughs> I know dogs can be smart, but not, not not quite that way. I don't think. I'm not seeing any. But, uh, I don't know. Hmm. Well, you just don't know Lassie. Apparently. <laughs> oh lordy. What's that girl? Your master's outside naked. <laughs> Oh, yeah. All right. So apparently, next story, apparently John Thornton, 30, of Southington, really likes a clean floor. Thornton was arrested in Bristol and across the pond, apparently, again, after he aggressively began mopping the floor, according to police. Aggressively? Aggressively. Mop the shit out of this floor, motherfucking dirty floor. Yes! (laughs) I feel like that's like a Tumblr, like... Uh, screen cap with the subtitles on, like inten- intensity intensifies, <laughs> mopping intensifies. Uh, I think I got a show title. <laughs> mopping <laughs> intensifies. intensifies. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh well, lordy, how do you? I wonder uh, how how aggressively do you? Th- I, I just have to wonder. Was he was he aggressively mopping? To the point to where he was actually bringing up tile and shit. 
I don't know. I mean, just I, I have to. I wonder. I wonder. But, I mean, there's there is a little bit more to this story, oh, but there it's is. just like there is. Uh, Bristol police were called to the DoubleTree Hotel around 6.30 p.m. Monday night. They found that John Thornton, 30, grabbed a mop from a female employee and began mopping the floor. Excuse me. Thornton then began to mop the floor but became more aggressive and mopped over the employee's shoes several times. <laughs> Your shoes are in the way! Get out of the way! Get, get, get! Your shoes are dirty! I, 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 I went Australian there. I don't know why. I, I, I was going to ask you why you're a southern man in Bristol. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, there is there is a southern – there is a Bristol in Florida. That's not – But we're not in Florida. No, we're not. This is over in no. UK. So. <laughs> this is the real Bristol. <laughs> oh. oh, Bristol, Florida, hashtag not the real, not the real Bristol. Oh. And he... Hashtag mopping intensifies. <laughs> That's... <laughs> That's a new hashtag campaign. Hashtag mopping intensifies. Oh, he then allegedly pushed a w the woman into a corner when she asked him to stop, according to Watson. Police arrested Thornton and charged him with breach of peace. He allegedly went on to make threats against the police and he was charged with threatening in the second degree. So he really loves mopping. This is like Danny Tanner on meth. <laughs> or is it crack? One of those two. <laughs> this is Danny Tanner cubed. Ah, oh, just damn, dude. Ah. When you gotta have a clean floor, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, you called John Thornton. Apparently. <laughs> well, I want to hire him. I want to hire him around here because the floors around here they they, they are filthy. Uh, they're not like you can. It's not like you can see things growing on them filthy but they're filthy enough that i walk around barefoot and five minutes later my the bottom soles of my feet are black mm -hmm. uh, we need him here. maybe you need to take some lessons in aggressively mopping yes yeah, yeah. well we all do uh, we all do here so I, i'm i'm gonna own that one. <laughs> oh lordy and our next stop oh we go to missouri i'm so sorry yes <laughs> the state sucks <laughs> Oh, uh, yes. A Missouri Republican official openly called President Obama a quote-unquote domestic enemy who needs to be ousted from office via military coup. Oh, uh, wow. Conspiracy much? Yeah. Like, that that's going to be the, the charge. Conspiracy. Yeah. Debbie Dunnigan serves as recorder of deeds in Jefferson County, which is just south of St. Louis County. Oh, God. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm uh, yeah. She is currently running for re-election after having swept into office as part of a Republican wave in 2010. But on Friday, Dunnigan went on Facebook to ask her military friends why they haven't forcefully removed President Obama from the White House. Referring to the commander-in-chief as a domestic enemy, Dunnigan asked why the military isn't holding up their oath to protect the Constitution. And this is what the Post says. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I have a question for all of my friends who have served or are currently serving in our military. Having not put on a uniform nor taken any type of military oath, there has to be something that I am just not aware of. But I cannot and do not understand why no action is being taken against our domestic enemy. I know he is supposedly the commander-in-chief, but the constant gives you, Constitution rather gives you the authority. What am I missing? Thank you for your bravery, and may God keep you safe. Um, uh, let, let's see. Um, the 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 the, the, the commander in chief. Yeah, that means that means he is their boss. And oh, uh, yeah. Well, doing oh, also, something that you don't agree with doesn't qualify as being a domestic enemy. Yeah, because <laughs> if that were the case, Miss Dunnigan, you would be a domestic enemy to me. So. Also, yeah. also, asking your military friends why they don't take up arms against their commander-in-chief. Here's a reason why. Treason in a time of war is punishable by death. Yeah. And they're willing to put their lives on the line, you know, in the battlefield or whatever. They're not going to put their lives on the line for your ass. Not individually, not in this case. They'll protect you if an enemy combatant tries to come after you. Sure. That's what they're paid to do. But they're not... They're, they're not your mafia, all right? I'm just going to point out that this woman is from Jefferson County, and Jeffco is the meth capital of the country. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I'm not saying she does meth. 
I'm just saying that's where she's from. That is like the exact attitude of Jeff County is like, and, and sorry to people who actually live in Jeff County, but I work in, on the border of Jeff County and it's all fucking rednecks, hillbillies, and uh, it's terrible. Oh, God. <laughs> meth heads everywhere. Everywhere meth heads. <laughs> Damn. Uh, you know, the few times I've been and, and actually – you know, better down in in your area, Kat. I I think I got lucky. Well, yeah, yeah. you were in St. Louis County. You were in SoCo. Yeah. Oh, so Dunnigan has since refused to move, refused to remove the post, and has made her page private. But they still have screenshot of the post, of course. And however, prior to removing the post, I thought she said she didn't remove it. Um. It has shoddy journalism there. Yeah, just a little bit. But she caught some serious flack over it. No shit. And resulting in her telling the St. Louis Post Dispatch that she didn't mean any ill intent towards President Obama when she called for a military coup against him. Something innocent and simple got twisted into a disaster because it's an election. I meant no ill intent toward the president. I meant no ill intent toward anybody. Then why don't you say what you fucking mean? Oh, wait, you did, but you got caught. You, you, you got people pissed off at you, and now you're backpedaling. You know, at the very I didn't least... mean anything bad by suggesting that we launch a coup against our commander in chief or suggesting <laughs> that military people uh, launch a coup. I didn't mean anything bad by that. Yeah, it's just no, no. Sorry, I'm, sweetheart. I'm that's not the media country. twisting words. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's just oh, god damn it. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I think I've said this before on other shows. But, you know, the the politicians out there that, that double down on their bullshit, I can give them at least enough respect that they don't back down, that they hold close to their beliefs and their you, ideas. You say committed to your stupidity. Yeah. <laughs> she is not committed to sparkle motion here. You know, and, and and thus, you know, whatever respect I may have had towards her beyond the, beyond the you know, treat her like a human goddamn being respect, that is, then that, you know, beyond that, <laughs> nothing. Fuck you. <laughs> Um, uh, which, by the way, the article does does note that uh, she did refer to President Obama and called for his forced removal from office by the military, which is an act of sedition. And let's, it's, 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 yeah, mm. kind of illegal there, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm I'm sure this person doesn't really understand about laws or anything. <laughs> yeah, she probably got she probably got um, um elected on the you know. You know the the pro-life, anti-gay stances, or or something like that. She probably got put into office by single-issue voters. That's that's my guess. In in Jeff County, it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. Uh, this actually reminds me. I don't I don't remember if I've put it in here. Did I put it in here? Um. um, 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 um. No, I I don't think I did. But I remember seeing somebody. I, I want to say it was. Oh God, who was it? Maybe Mitt Romney? No, uh, somebody was over in England, you know, you know, talking, you know, talking smack about the president or, or talking about the country or whatever, and saying things that if that had happened back when Bush was in office, like with the Dixie Chicks, then they they would have been you know bitched at and 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 basically have their lives ruined because oh my God, how dare you speak ill against the president? Uh, and then that's just – for whatever reason, I'm just reminded of that because of this story. Yeah, it's okay when a Republican does that to a Democrat, but you put it on the other end and, oh my god, try them for treason. Ruin their lives, whether the, whether or not the president cares, which, by the way, I have since learned with the whole Dixie Chicks thing. But W, he didn't give a shit. He's like, hey, they got a right to say it. What the fuck's wrong with you? So you know, credit where credit's due. You got to at least give them that credit. Mm. Oh dear. And speaking, oh, I had I, I had brought up pro life just in passing. This next story. In their never-ending quest to put the life of fertilized eggs and undeveloped fetuses over the actual life of actual human beings, the actual pro life movement has actually started to put up an actual stink. Okay, I'm going to stop with the actuals. About two potential vaccines for Ebola, the disease that is currently paralyzing the ignorant with unjustified fear. Yes. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> My sister works with a guy who is terrified of Ebola, and he's become a punchline in our house <laughs> anytime <laughs> Ebola comes up. 
Um, oh my god, a bowl is one step closer to Dan! <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. oh no. This week's outrage is from Children of God for Life, and they put out a press release condemning the use of fetal stem cells to develop a vaccine for Ebola. There is absolutely no reason to use aborted fetal cell lines, stated Debbie Vinage, director of Children of God for Life. Ooh. At least two other Ebola vaccines in development by the University of Texas and Geovax are either using Vero cells or chicken eggs. Yeah, because, you know... Chickens and people. Yeah. Same, same thing, really. Yeah. Likewise, there are therapeutic products such as ZMAP from Leaf Bio and TKM Ebola, uh, from I guess from Techmira, I guess that's how you pronounce it, that are using plant or Vero cells. Um... First of all, aborted fetal cell lines. Um, if they're already aborted, what's the problem? Like seriously, like like, you know, if if they're aborted, you know, why not use them for the greater good? Hi, you know, that way, you know, it, it could go and help other people, you know, and that way, and that way, if the woman, you know, if she either has to or or just simply wants to, you know, abort the pregnancy, then whatever stem cells are there can go to help other people. Makes sense to me. Do, am I am I am I anywhere good on this, or am I just blowing out my ass here? My uh, my my. I think that they probably think that if you uh, the the using of aborted fetus whatever it just encourages more people to abort. Right. Well, I'm looking at this, and it says fetal stem cells, but it doesn't say anywhere about them being aborted. Um. Just so you guys know, and I don't mean any sort of disrespect when I say this to people who are pro-life, right. um, but fetal medical waste comes from more places than abortions. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I'm not saying that, you know, these fetuses are garbage. It's just how it's termed medically. Yeah. Um, because... It, no matter what happens, if you have a, a fetus outside of the womb, you, they have to do something with it. Mm -hmm. um, that and that said, you know there are, are other reasons other than abortion that there would be a, a fetus that is not implanted. Yeah, and and yeah, and as gruesome as, as it is, if it's not a viable life but it still has healthy cells, and it can be used, then you know. I don't see why not. It's, it's gruesome, yeah. Don't get me wrong. And, and a little on the horrific side, but, you know, if it goes for the greater good, if it can help beat Ebola, which has infected a whole grand total of three people in this country. So, you know, but, you know, these vaccines, they're not, they're not necessarily for us, although they can help us. From what I understand, the vaccines they're, look, they're trying to develop are meant to go back over to Africa and mm -hmm. help them, from my understanding. So, you know, if, if, you know, however they do it, you know, let them do it. You know, as long as nobody's being harmed, nobody's being, it, it's like this. Nobody is being forced to give up their fetuses for this thing. Nobody's being forced to do this. So, and, and as they point out later in the article, unfortunately for CGL, they picked the wrong battle to fight this time. A massive number of people may very well refuse them, which is part of the, uh, uh, news release I, I didn't read there. Um, not bloody likely. Fox News has pro kaif I think they meant life. That's a typo. Uh, right wing so terrified of Ebola that they would eat a live baby if they were told it would protect him from Obama's evil plot to destroy <laughs> Oh, God. Can you just, can you just imagine Bill O'Reilly getting on Fox News? The only way, the only way that you can stop Obama is eat your children right now. Go eat them. Yeah. That's natural selection at its finest. <laughs> yes. Especially, you know, oh God, especially the people that would actually do this. I mean, I'd be like, okay, you, you're going over there. You, you are, you see, I am here. You're going to go to that island about, oh, 2,000 miles off the coast of, oh, I don't know, Puerto Rico or something. You know, way out there. You're going over there. <laughs> Puerto Rico you know, ain't that far away. No, but 2,000 miles from Puerto Rico. So you got the distance between Florida and Puerto Rico, and then Puerto Rico on out. So it's still decent. Uh, oh, but wow. 
<laughs> just the baby. Wow. Ah. This is just, uh, it's just weird. I mean, the other thing is I, I should also specify that technically there's no such thing as fetal stem cells. They would be embryonic stem cells. And you can actually get <laughs> embryonic stem cells from newborns. Yeah. We so just... it doesn't even require, <laughs> you know, the end of a life to to get embryonic stem cells. Yeah, you just you just go talk to one of those quiverful women. Say, okay, next time you pop out a baby, give us the leftovers. We'll put this in the vaccine. That's well, obviously not all the leftovers. I mean, I don't think you could do much with a placenta, but you get could... you can eat it. There you go. You could eat it. Some people do. Yes, and they are so weird fuckers. Why would you do that? No, I don't know. You. No, no, oh, just so... just no. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. <sighs> okay, so next one. We're going to your state, Holly. Uh oh. Yeah. And I am. Does, it, does this involve Steve King? Because if it involves Steve King, I just want everyone to know I have nothing to do with any of this. <laughs> Actually, no, it's not Steve King. An Iowa Republican candidate for U.S. Oh, Congress. Joni Ernst! Well, yes. no wonder! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The. The candidate for U.S. Senate perhaps revealed more than she meant to about why conservatives are still so resistant to the Affordable Health Care Act, President Obama's health care initiative, also known as Obamacare. In an audio obtained by Iowa Public Radio, Senate hopeful Joni Ernst told a group of reporters that the reason Republicans oppose Obamacare is because the job of caring for the poor is simply not the purview of the government. The poor, she said, should rely on churches and charitable organizations for help. Um... I'm not going to deny that churches and charitable organizations can do good work. Excuse me. A lot of them do, and that's fine. They should not be relied upon, and especially if you're going to a church or an organization that basically makes you feel like you have to adhere to their religion in order to get help. And I know those are not the norm, if, if I'm thinking right. I could be wrong. If I am, correct me. But the government is supposed to be there to be a secular, you know, safety net type of thing in this situation. The the one of the jobs of the government is to help take care of the of the population and protect them. And part of that is making sure everybody is healthy and and, and you know, being able to work to however they can, however much they can. Whether they can work a full forty hour week or can only work part time because of debilitating diseases or whatever. Make sure they're happy, make sure they're healthy. You got a good workforce, you get a good economy going. Hell, why don't we have that country? Oh, that's right. We have too many rich fuckers in, in power that, that want to just hoard all the money to themselves and fuck the poor. That's what they think. Am I wrong? It's it's definitely a case where um, conservatives don't really consider poor people um, human beings uh, and citizens of their country. And so that's the government's job is to help the people, all of the people, mm. not just the rich, white, conservative people. Um, yep. But they don't really see poor people as as people, so they don't see it as their job to help Poor people. Even though I'm, you know, a lot of these conservatives, they they identify as Christian, and oh, what was it? Wasn't it? Wasn't it like one of those Christian commandments where uh, you 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 know you're supposed to help the poor? Nah, nah. No, of course. That's just a bunch of liberal hippie communism talk right there. Uh huh. Well, they must really hate Jesus then. <laughs> <laughs> they must. They, they certainly hate everything Jesus stood for, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we're looking at Obamacare right now, Ernst said, and once we start with those benefits in January, how are we going to get people off of those? It's exponentially harder to remove people once they've already been on those programs. No, it's not, because what the Affordable Care Act has done, um, I, I might be a little bit hazy, because I, you know, this, I don't bring it up very often, at least not in my personal life, is uh, basically it allows you know it basically gets you affordable health care. Plus, you have the option to buy directly from the government at a, at a cheaper rate is you know however much you can pay for and it the the government is considered a private insurer in that case which means if you don't want that one you don't have to have that one 
you can get help if you need help in order to get the insurance and and somebody take it over from me i think i'm fucking it all up <laughs> uh am i am i close either of you on on what it is I'm I'm not sure what their complaint is. It makes it harder to get people off of programs. I don't really understand what they're implying. Right, because I mean, while Obamacare, you know, makes it so everybody can receive affordable health care, it it's not like the government is just giving shit away. I mean, yeah. yes, you do get like discounted care if you don't if you can't get care anywhere else, but it, yeah. It, it, yet again, this is not. It's not like the ge- government's giving away free money. No, it's they're, not. They're, so they're I don't really understand sure that, the argument here. Yeah, they're just making sure that you can afford it based on your income. So, so I signed up for uh, for Obamacare because I wasn't getting any through work, and I went in, and it wasn't hard at all, and yeah. I got a nice big discount, and now I can afford to go to the doctor. Yeah. Um, I don't understand what the issue is that, that they're bringing up because this makes no sense to me. I think I think what she really wants in the long run, and I'm and bear in mind, this is just stab in the dark, you know, throwing a knife and seeing if it hits the target. I'm willing to bet that she's complaining because it's not, you know, people are not paying enough for the health care they're getting, she thinks. I think she thinks people need to pay more for their health care. They need to may, be be forced to choose between rent, food, and medicine. That's my guess. I could be wrong. I could be totally wrong. But or or another alternative, you know, make it up to the churches and the charitable organizations that may or may not be religious and may or may not discriminate based on your your circumstances, your life choices, or just how the hell you were born. <laughs> that may or may not have any kind of regulation at all whatsoever. Yeah, this this is one of the reasons why we have the regulations that we have, so people can be treated fairly, and and decently and equally. This is why we're supposed to have. This is why you know the the, the equal pay is supposed to keep men and women at the same pay grade. Not 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 this. Men make one dollar something to every woman's dollar. No. It's supposed to be equal, one dollar for everybody, you know that sort of thing. But we all know how the government has fucked that up. <clears throat> well, conservatives certainly do not believe in equality, so. Yeah, uh, no, they believe in equality. They believe in equality for crusty old white fuckers that like to yell at clouds. In other words, they don't believe in equality. Pretty much. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> okay, and, and more, more conservatives. Oh, uh, this I, I swear, this is the last. Last conservative thing that we are dealing with this week that I know of. Uh, the, this is just a statement from Jan Brewer, uh, governor of Arizona. And recently, uh, a bunch of states got their uh, gay marriage bans just struck the fuck down. I, I think like all of the western states are now are, are now uh, you know you have legal gay marriage. Uh, a good chunk of the eastern states do. Um, it's just kind of kept out of the deep south because the deep south are stubborn assholes. Um, that includes – The last to change. As, <laughs> as always. Uh, so anyways, the statement reads, in 2008, Arizona voters approved a state constitutional amendment to define marriage as a union of one man and one woman. Now, with their rulings, the federal courts have again thwarted the will of the people and further eroded the authority of the states to regulate and uphold our laws. It is not only disappointing, but also deeply troubling that unelected federal judges can dictate the laws of individual states, create rights based on their personal policy preferences, and supplant the will of the people in an area traditionally left to the states for more than 200 years. As Justice Scalia op- opined, such action is tantamount to an assertion of ju- an assertion of judicial supremacy over the people and is an image of the ju- judiciary that would have been unrecognizable to those who wrote and ratified our national charter. Simply put, courts should not be in the business of making and changing laws based on their personal agendas. It is not the role of the judiciary to determine that same-sex marriages should be allowed. Historically and traditionally, that power belongs to the states and to the people. If society wants to recognize same-sex marriage or civil unions, that decision should be made through our elected representatives or at the ballot, not the courts. Except... This has to do with the rights of the citizenry, and it should not be up for vote or debate. They, you know, homosexual, 
citizen of this country should have the same rights and opportunities as a heterosexual. Equality! Yeah! Exactly! That and, thing that we don't have in this country. Yeah, and that is what the the court is upholding. They are upholding this, you know, just to say, hey, you know what? You cannot use your bigotry to oppress these people legally. No. Yeah. Not uh, yours. Anybody not remember ask. the line, all men are created equal? I feel like that was that was in there somewhere. That yeah. so, it sounds vaguely familiar. Yeah. Like the most important thing ever. <laughs> it is. It's just, it's just yeah. Hi. And it's just the Supreme Court. Again, Supreme Court saying, yeah, you can't has. So Jan Brewer, governor of Arizona, fuck off. You lost. You're going to keep losing. You're on the wrong side of history. And we're going to look back on you. You know, our children and our grandchildren are going to look back on you. And they're going to wonder what the fuck you were thinking. That's, that's as simple as that. They may even laugh at you. I hope they do. Mine certainly will. Yes. Oh, and our last one, I'm, I'm ending it on, on a on a more lighter note than everything else, because we've, we've been up and down and around and everywhere. And I found this on Alternet. I, I think uh, Namio had... had... <laughs> I'm sorry. I just I glanced at the story. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, Namio had posted this on Twitter, and I, I was like, you know what? We need we need a lighter story to end this on. So it's, it's an article from Alternet of four weirdest things we learned about sex this week. Uh, this week brings us some fascinating stories about that thing that's almost always on everyone's mind, sex. Here are some interesting stories about a marriage equality advocating snail, the perils of ocean sex, and why getting laid is good for your brain. Which, before we get started, you know... Something funny actually happened to me con concerning that this week. No, not no, not explicitly happening. I was playing a Cards Against Humanity game, and one of one of the members was you know guessing everybody's sexuality, and she's like, okay, this person's straight, whatever, whatever, whatever. And of course, a Skype call, and, and of course, she can't, we can't see who she's pointing at, mm -hmm. so she put a list in, and she pegged me for bi. And I'm like, do I really come off as bi? I mean, I I, I wonder. Cause... I, I think maybe it's just that you like sex enough that she just assumed that maybe it sex, so you would want it. <laughs> it's that maybe but you'll it. take it from anyone, anywhere, anytime. <laughs> right. Yeah, like, baby. Oh, oh, it's sex. Well, I mean, oh, clearly, go <laughs> like sex. So, oh well, yeah, sign uh, him up. Although, although, it, although one of one of the things that uh, might also help is my cameo in the Raspberry Reich review from a few years ago. <laughs> oh. But yeah, so I don't know. For me, it's a, a national coming out day this year. I had to come out as specifically not gay. Yeah. Hey guys, <laughs> I know I like ladies, um, but I am not gay. <laughs> yeah. Which which tells me nobody. Which tells me the people who think that you are gay don't don't listen to the shows because I know you've come out on the show several times as bisexual. Yeah. And it's like it's like yeah. It's well, I don't really consider it coming out because it, it's well, never been a secret in my life. Well, yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh yeah i was just like uh wow everybody apparently thinks i'm gay and then it's like i read my twitter account sometimes now like aware of the fact that people think i'm gay and i'm like <laughs> oh i guess i kind of get it <laughs> yeah so that that's one of those things it's... well when i put it that way yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, well. <laughs> oh so the, f the first one that they have here. Gays use hermaphrodite snails to spread their gay marriage propaganda. <laughs> what? Only well, we're not spreading yeah. it very fast if we're using snails. <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and what must be huge and exciting news to the community of people interested in snail, spe snail species classification? A new snail species has been discovered. What makes this story relevant to the rest of us is the name the researchers in Taiwan decided to give the newly identified species. Uh, Agestia diversa familia. The name, which means diverse family, was chosen to send a message and make a statement, as Dr. Yen Chang explained. The snails are hermaphrodite animals, which means they have both male and female reproductive organs in a single individual. They represent the diversity of sex orientation in the animal kingdom. We decided that this may be that maybe this is a good occasion to name the snail to remember the struggle for recognition of same-sex marriage rights. Lest you think it's totes inappropriate inappropriate to name a species after something creative or current events related, you'll be glad to know that scientists name a beetle after Arnold Schwarzenegger because of its biceps-like legs, 
excuse me, a lichen after Barack Obama to recognize his support of science, and perhaps most appropriately, slime mold beetles after George Bush, Dick Cheney, and Donald Rumsfeld. <laughs> <laughs> Just, okay then. Uh, uh, number two, your brain wants more sex, fewer crossword puzzles. Uh, well, yes. Yeah? <laughs> crossword puzzles are fine, but if it's between that and getting laid, I'm getting laid. So maybe, you know, and if it's good, and if it's good, well, then I wouldn't want to worry about the crossword puzzles. But if you're doing crossword puzzles while you're having sex, it's not good sex, I don't think. Y yet again, hey, this do is, not this question the multitaskers out there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't put yourself to the test, guys. It's just rude. <laughs> no, please don't. Uh, but now, yeah, again, this reminds me of my Twitter account last night because somebody was talking about something and saying they had their girl waiting for them in their bed. And I was like, what are you doing? Oh, There's God. somebody in your bed waiting to get laid by you and you're on Twitter? Yeah, it's like, what the get fuck? Out. No, get, what out. get out! No, literally, get out. what doing. Quit yeah. reading this tweet. Yeah, it's like, just like, go. And, and, yeah. And do the so thing. I, I saw some I, of that. I, I posted a general tweet about it, and somebody else responded, yeah, my girl's in my bed waiting for me, too. And I was like, stop tweeting me! <laughs> Go get laid! What's wrong with yes. you? Unless you unless you got laid literally, like, five seconds before you started tweeting again, go do it! <laughs> or five yeah. seconds before you started tweeting. Yeah, well, at least five seconds or more. Oh. <laughs> But uh, now you no longer have to wrestle between what your brain says and what your heart, red genitals, wants. Because it turns out your brain wants you to have more sex. Or at least it should. Unless it's a masochist. Sex helps the brain in several ways. Sex can decrease anxiety by releasing hormones including oxycontin, dopamine, serotonin, which improves people's moods. And something a lot of us already know. Uh, studies have linked sex to neurogenesis or creation of new neurons in the brain, cell growth in the hippocampus, which can help, which can in turn help prevent memory loss and dementia. Another study found that orgasms bring more blood to the brain, which means more nutrients and oxygen. Things like crossword puzzles, Sudoku, and memory games only work on more localized regions. Sorry, people who prefer Sudoku to sex and pretend it's for the sake of their brains. You know? I think they're apologizing to people that don't exist. Probably, yeah. Because, <laughs> again, puzzles are fun. Nothing beats the sex. Well, no, I mean, there do. are asexual people in the world, so, you know. Okay, yeah, yeah. They, they do exist. It's just that yeah. Um, if you are pretending, then, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Oh, let's see. Number three, conservatives aren't so conservative about sex searches online. Who saw this coming? No pun intended. Literally everyone. Yes. <laughs> a new study found that people who live in more religious and more conservative states are more likely to Google sex because sex education in those states suck. Um, the study differentiated between politically conservative states where people are more likely to search for things like gay sex, free porn, and triple X, and religiously conservative states where the searches were not for, were not for non-traditional sex per se. According to the study, it may be that these sex searches were conducted with the intention of delivering traditional sexual content, such as information regarding monogamous married heterosexual sex. Mm -hmm. But probably not, because we're human beings. Yeah, we like to, <laughs> for the majority, we like to fuck. I mean, that that's the basic thing. Unless you're asexual, odds are, we want to fuck. And, and I, I am very much proud of the fact that I am in a const I'm in a near constant state of I want to fuck. I admit it. <laughs> I control it, but I admit it. You know, and if and if you're similar Conceal, to me, feel don't feel something like that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> don't let them know. Uh, and then the last one, number four, C-sex can cause suction so strong couples are literally stuck to each other. <laughs> It turns out the old adage, don't have sex in the sea or you will get stuck to the person you're having sex with, is true. <laughs> okay, that adage doesn't exist, but maybe it should, as one couple learned the hard way. After engaging in sea sex off of Italy's Porto San Giorgio, Giorgio, the two lovers discovered that they were literally stuck to each other. The man was able, unable to remove himself from the woman because of suction. They were taken to the hospital where they were pulled apart after a doctor gave the woman an, an injection to dilate her uterus. Note to self, I am not fucking in the ocean. 
you, you have sex on the beach. That's how it works. Yes. And if and if you must be surrounded by what I, I don't even think you should do that in in the pool. Right. Well, I was gonna say, is this like specifically the ocean that you can't have sex? Like, is there something in particular about ocean water that means that you shouldn't have sex there? I mean, I mean aside our... from the fact that like things live in the ocean and. I don't even want to go there. But if, <laughs> if you can't have sex in water, the hot tub industry is in real trouble. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> although, although, yeah, I, that that is something I would like to try out. I, I would like to 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 um um. We're hmm. thinking, not coming to me. Um um um. Not, not, dem- <laughs> <laughs> uh, not demonstrate, but um um uh, uh, research. That is something I would like to research. Obviously, not in a position to where we are completely helpless if the worst does happen. Um, just the... have a medic on standby waiting. Yes. yes. Right. Well, okay. And then they were. <laughs> I'm sorry, but like, okay, so now these people are stuck together. How did they get to the hospital? That's what I want to know. Like, like what? Like, were they just floating in the sea? And they were like, "Could you fish us out because our genitals are stuck together?" <laughs> I know, that's what I want. Excuse wondered. us, <laughs> Miss Goosey. We we inserted tab B into slot A, and <laughs> we cannot undo. Yes. <laughs> you know, honestly, it's Italy. It's yeah. probably like every week. <laughs> oh, oh, lordy. <laughs> Oh, so with that, that that's going to end our show this week. Oh, God. Thank you guys for listening. Um, I hope in the next few weeks, where I'm still working on getting other things put together. Uh, the the three-person format on, on the regular is just one of those. We're working on new artwork. Uh, I've got somebody working on some new audio bumpers that are going to go up as well. Uh, the song that I'm using at the beginning is still going to stay the same. That's not changing yet. So hope hope that once all the changes are in place, you guys like it, that you guys enjoy it. And then all that'll be left is for me to ramble less. <laughs> Maybe. But no. I wouldn't hold my breath. No, no, <laughs> please don't hold your breath, because I might ramble so long that you just pass out, and you'll never know if I stop rambling, because by the time you wake back up, I could still be going. <laughs> oh, so with that, uh, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and get out of here. Uh, if we wanted to find Holly on the social media, where could we find her? You can find me all over the social media, social medias, <laughs> as Gookie Gox, G-O-O-K-Y-G-O-X. So Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, whatever. Um, you can also find my Facebook fan page, Holly Christine Brown, and you can find me over at Nerdvice. Sweet. And where could we find the cat? Oh, God, I have to remember all the podcasts I'm on. <laughs> uh, you can find me on the social media at uh, Twitter, at LabyrinthCat, at Facebook.com slash NerdistCat. And then you can find me... Um, Oh fuck! What's this? On what the fuck at twelve hundred one beyond dot com, and then you can find me on my other show, Nerds of the Third Power, over on that guy with the glasses under the podcast tab. Sweet! And now for me, yay! You can find me and my stuff on rtgomer.com and nerdvice.com. If you want to find me on the social medias, you can find me on Twitter and Tumblr at gomer 21 X. And you can find this show along with my other two podcasts, uh, the Port Charlie Podcast and Constructive Deconstruction on iTunes, if you want to go download and, and you know leave a helpful review, that'd be that'd be kind of nice because I need to know your thoughts and, and and you know actual thoughts by the way, not not just some some trolls coming in saying lol, you know, I I I I, I, I need your feedback because it would be nice because it, it's hard to improve when you don't have feedback. Um, anyway, uh, if you like this show, if you like the shows that I do and put out there and you want to help support the shows directly, uh, just head over to patreon.com slash gomer 21 X. You can throw any amount of money you want at me, and for as little as $1 per production, you can get things like behind-the-scenes vlogs that come out at least once a month. Uh, you get early access to all future shows and a little – and maybe a few little things here and there that I'm trying to work on putting together. But once they are put together, I'll actually update the page with them as well. And I would also – I could not end the show without mentioning my beautiful girlfriend, Becky Hopkins, who is an amazing title card artist and award-winning animator. And she has her own Patreon page as well, which is over at patreon.com slash Hop, which has links to her DeviantArt page, her actual um, professional webpage as well. And – 
I'm glad to say that if you throw enough money at her through her Patreon, she will do a 30-second animation just for your faces. That's right. 30 seconds of animation. Again, award-winning animator. Damn straight. Go check her out. And uh, that should be it. Again, that's patreon.com slash beckyhop. And with that, I think I've rambled long enough. We're going to go ahead and get on out of here. Until next time, this is Gomer the Ranting Thespian with Holly Christine and the Cat signing off. Bye. Thespian Talk is an RT Gomer Productions presentation. Check us out at rtgomer.com.